I think this is the most bizarre food combination I've ever had. What would you give it out of 10? Be honest, because I like it. The Minnesota State Fair. 300 vendors, 500 foods, over 2 million attendees. Calvin, Sunny, welcome to the Minnesota State Fair. Thank you. <laughs> Last time, I explored some of this fair's mega food factories. Corn, french fries, turkey legs, delicious. But honestly, it was too normal for me. Well, today, we gotta bring it up a notch. I'm talking bizarre, or am I talking or are you talking? You're talking. He's talking bizarre fair foods. Today, it's all about the bizarre, strange food combinations that sound insane. I'm talking weird, unique flavor combinations that should not exist. And in fact, some of them are an abomination to our Lord and Savior. I didn't sign up for that. But what if I told you it's all free? I'm down. Really? Yeah, of course. I mean, free is my middle name. Let's do it. Let's do it. Bizarre foods at the Minnesota State Fair. Let's go. And then you walk that way. Classic comedy duo. The Blue Barn. It was first established in 2014. The menu, food that adds a twist to Minnesota classics. Stephanie? Co-owner Stephanie has been here from the beginning. People think I don't have friends, but I pay, I mean, Calvin hangs out with me voluntarily. Hey, sure. friends are good. This barn boasts a huge kitchen and staff with great looking headwear. How hard is it to find a spot here at the State Fair? Okay, so I tried for nine years. Wow. And get financing for a building that you own, but you really can't take with you. Yeah, you can't do anything with it except for two weeks a year. They're all about comfort food that's shareable, easy to eat, and addictive. But just because they have a great food invention doesn't always mean they get to add it to their menu. You have to put everything goes through a review process with the fair. Oh. Once they approve it, it's embargoed until food release day. This year, you have a brand new item. Yep. We're here for, what is the full name? The Buffalo Chicken Doskit. Okay, now what the heck is a doskit? It's... This recipe starts with buttermilk biscuit mix. It has buffalo, chicken, it has dough, it has skin. No buffaloes were harmed in this. Oh, no buffalo. Oh. None. They got him a vegan. <laughs> he doesn't eat buffalo, but he will eat chicken. I will. Then add buffalo sauce, diced chicken, and mix. Scoop that mixture to form balls. Then deep fry the dough. This ingredient mixed with this shape, it's not a donut, it's not a biscuit, it's a dough skin. We take a vanilla icing, lace it with Frank's Red Hot to give it that buffalo. Sweet frosting, frosting like mixed it. with buffalo yeah. wing sauce. It's a little sassy. Finish it off with sprinkled bacon bits, panko breadcrumbs, and chopped parsley. This is a Frankenstein of a concoction. I was expecting a donut that looked like a donut, but here, it's almost like they pre-chewed it for you. Here's just some little bites. You don't even have to chew that <laughs> Cheers. Mmm. -hmm. Well, hey man, I like the texture of the biscuit because it's nice and kind of hard and crunchy on the outside, a little bit softer on the inside. Then I'm eating the sauce over here and I'm like, wait, is this a frosting sauce with buffalo or a buffalo sauce with a little bit of frosting? It is more on the sweeter side. The chicken is folded inside, but I don't really see much of the chicken in the dish. I mean, if you put a gun to my head, or an AK-47, rocket launcher, I mean, even a big machete. What about a water gun? Water gun wouldn't do it. Okay, if you put any kind of lethal device next to my head and said, hey, do you taste chicken? I would say, can you not put that by my head? <laughs> and then I would say, no. I don't yeah. taste chicken. I love her creativity. I love that she took something that no one else is going to do. No. It's really interesting that this has to be approved by a board. It's a buffalo chicken biscandwich. Bistonut. Bit. Um, don't. 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 Don't skit. Don't skit. Ha, ha. Is this going to make it to next year? We'll have to wait around to find out. I'm going to ask her POS and her accountants. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Like Blue Bar, other adventurous vendors attempt to push the envelope with twisted food innovations. Michelle. Hey, nice to see you guys. This includes Michelle from Andy's Grill. Quick question, Andy's Grill. How do I know when to add an E to the word grill and when not to? We just thought we'd get creative because it kind of covered more of the sign. Oh, oh yeah, it's very symmetrical now. Yeah. This place goes back to 1987, a family business that's famous for food that's everything Philly. So I've noticed the strategy around the fair is different for everybody. I saw a guy selling corn and only corn. How many different menu items do you have here? You no, know, we have probably about 12. 12 is already a lot. This year we added our waffle burger. That's kind of a new twist oh. to a hamburger. Imagine how you'd make a normal bacon cheeseburger. Well, this is kind of like that. On the flat top, they cook up beef patties, cheese, and bacon together. Here's where it gets wild. Instead of buns, and stay with me here, they use 
waffles. Waffles infused with maple syrup and crunchy pearl candy. This year, it's all about the waffle burger, but we need something to wash it down with. I've heard that people travel from near and far, but mostly from near, to get this special beer you have. Can you tell me about this beer? It's the chocolate chip cookie beer. It's to die for. It's an amber beer that's infused with chocolate, vanilla, and it's rimmed with 100% chocolate. Is it like drinking a cookie? It has a little bit of a taste like that. This old, yeah, I love beer, but we can pretend it's a cookie for the show. Yes, that's absolutely. Right. It is still before morning, 11.59. If we drink the beers right now, it'll be breakfast beers. It's really more of a dessert beer, but let's go for it. What? I've never had chocolate sprinkles on my beer before in my life. Yeah, how do you feel about it? I feel like it's a nice thought. I think it's cool to have chocolate and, and sugar with your beers. It's a nice thought, like when someone gets you a pecan pie for your birthday, but you're allergic to, to nuts. <laughs> <laughs> We've got syrup on the side, but I think first we should just try to dig in with a bite. It's gonna be tough to get a big bite. I have a small mouth. You gotta go even smaller than this. Mm, the waffle is quite sweet. It's candy. Yeah. Inside the waffle, you can feel little candied, crunchy bits breaking apart. This reminds me of a breakfast burger. Like a McGriddle. A McGriddle. Another bite? Do I have to? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like it. Are you starting to throw a route? Yes. Yeah. Let's dip that and see how it is. We got some syrup in here. The move is going to dip, and then you want to pull it up so that it drops right back into the burger. This is the whole sweet and savory. I'm trying to explain the food right now. Mm. This is the whole sweet and savory Minnesota Fair type food. And it's inventive, mm -hmm. and it's bizarre. Are you, are you trying to not take a bite? <laughs> <laughs> This bizarre breakdown continues at Dino's Euro. They specialize in all types of euros, a popular street food in Greece. But this year, they've decided to cross over with a taste of Italy. I just got back from Dino's Euros and I got an order of a Greek food that you might not expect. What is this actually? Well, first of all, are you familiar with a euro? Do you mean gyro? I meant gyro. Then I, yes, I am. Imagine a gyro with all the delicious shaved lamb and fresh cream tomato Feta cheese? Feta cheese. Take that, throw it in a blender, and put it in a ravioli. But a ravioli isn't Greek. Exactly. Ravioli. It's pasta stuffed with something delicious like meat, cheese, or hopefully both. Here, these mad food scientists have put all the ingredients from a Greek gyro, including this delicious roasted and seasoned gyro meat, and they've shoved it into this Italian ravioli shell with a roasted garlic dressing. I've had ravioli many times before, but that comes from a can. There's also another way to make it, which is boiling. But there's actually a third way to make it. That is actually frying the ravioli. Now, are we at the fair or are we not at the fair? We are at the fair. We gotta fry some stuff. I can't wait to try this out. It's a one biter. Ooh, you're gonna try to do one bite? Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna take two bites. Cause your mouth is so small. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's so zesty. Mm. The first thing you taste is the sauce on the outside. It's garlicky, it's rich. That fried texture of the ravioli is so different because I love a boiled ravioli. It's so fun to chew through almost like a doughy, al dente ravioli. I like how they combined all the ingredients inside. It's the whole euro and made it into bite-sized walkable pieces. Oh, walkable. You can take it on a ride, take it in a photo booth. You can take it into the little animal area, secretly feed it to an alpaca. But you can't take it swimming. <laughs> now for a food combination that'll really make you question your existence. I just grew up in this state and I assumed everything I ate was pretty normal. And then you saw this food and you said you'd never seen this before. What is this? It's called a pickle dog. It comes from the stand right behind us. This place is called Pickle Dog. Since 1989, this family-run business has been bringing smiles to patrons' faces. This is something you might actually see at a party in Minnesota. You know, people here might make some deviled eggs and bring that to a party. I like that. Like a hors d'oeuvres. Or d'oeuvres. Is it singular? There is an S, but the S is silent. Or d'oeuvres. Uh, you went to French cooking school, right? Yes. Tradition has it that a pickle dog should contain cream cheese, pickle, and ham. But here, they make it with seasoned, smoked pastrami. <laughs> Uh, it's so good. I love it. Bro. I love it. I want to know why. I'm too familiar with it. I can't break it down. The crunch of the pickle with the creaminess of the cream cheese and then wrapped in pastrami, that is better than any hush puppy. That is better than any pigs in a blanket. That Ooh. is better than any meatloaf on a stick. I got to say, the pastrami is a huge level up. It has a pepperiness to it. They don't make pastrami in Asia. <laughs> For this bizarre masterpiece, it's $8. Honestly, 
It's a lot of money. <laughs> Pastrami's not cheap though. I really like it. No, honestly, this is one of the dishes that we had on the Bizarre episode that I really am down with. This is food number four. We still have two insane locations to go to. Let's go. No. ever heard of tachos? It's basically nachos, but instead of tortilla chips, you're using tater tots and you are happy about it. Here at Snack House, they take it a step further with a new bizarre blend in a recipe they call Memphis Tacho. I'm told it's inspired by Elvis Presley himself. He reportedly loved bananas and peanut butter and bacon. And now, see, I think that we do not know for sure. Oh. I did five seconds of research. Hold on. Presley's fondness for peanut butter and banana sandwiches is well established. However, bacon is not mentioned at all in accounts. Well, then. These tachos took inspiration from the classic but still weird peanut butter banana bacon sandwich. They're skipping the cheese and layering in bacon, sliced bananas, and finally, a peanut butter sauce. This is something altogether different. Also, there's a tractor in the background. So, I mean, if that's not production value, I don't know what is. How much is enough for you guys? When will it be enough? They don't always have peanut sauce in Vietnam, but if I get peanut sauce with my spring roll, I am like double dunking it in there. I'm a peanut sauce fiend. A peanut sauce lover. A peanut. You just really emphasize the tea, please. Peanut lover. Yeah. This is a banana with some peanut butter sauce. Warm, peanutty, banana-y. Mm -hmm. Next, the tater tot. Salty, creamy, delicious. I did not expect the peanut butter to go well with a tater tot, but it goes really well. And these are great tots. If Elvis was here today, he would be proud. He would shed a tear and maybe even write a song about this very food. Ain't nothing but a tater dog. Don't sing it too much. Okay, well, I can sing, but if I become too melodic, we'll get defunded. We got everything here. The perfect bite. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's try it out. That's delicious. There's something about this that, that is kind of off-putting for me. Really? What would you give it out of 10? Be honest, because I like it. A three out of 10? A three out of 10. Wow. Yeah. I would love to have tachos with nacho cheese, chili carne carne, jalapeno, sour cream, all that good stuff. They're so cliche. I know. You're a traditionalist. No. No. <laughs> but in this situation, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. It's my good friend, Calvin. Hello. Hello, guys. Meet Stina and Luis. She's the co-founder, and he's the corporate chef of Nordic Waffles. Their products are being sold across 10 states in the USA. It all started here in Minnesota about six years ago. First of all, you come from pretty different places, right? I mean, you're originally from Mexico. Yes, from Mexico. Originally from Norway. Uh -huh. And then you met in Minnesota? Yes. yes. Stina earned herself the title of Waffle Queen in Norway, but she decided to move here, where she could introduce her traditional heart-shaped waffles. Waffles in Norway is a big tradition, and it's also, you know, how kids in America make lemonade. That's what kids in Norway do, too. They start selling their waffles and their little... A little waffle stuff. Yeah. I love that. If you do that here, you will be arrested by the police if you do not have a permit. <laughs> Eventually, she met Luis, and together, they're making waffle magic. Here, they offer waffle toppings you won't find in Norway or anywhere else for that matter. Breakfast waffles, a s'mores waffle, even a smoked salmon waffle. With my vision of creating a revolution with waffles, which we in Nordic Waffles call the waffle-lution, it became a little hard uh. to stay in Norway and do this because people wouldn't try it and they wouldn't eat it. There is a culture. If you stand out or if you do something wild, you become somebody. You should hide. You shouldn't really show it. Well, look, the USA is pretty much the opposite of that. Yes. Can you talk about some of the standout items on the menu? Chicken and macaroni. Allow me to introduce the chicken and macaroni waffle. It sounds straightforward, but let's go deeper. It starts with the bone-in drumstick, which hangs out in a 24-hour marinade that contains buttermilk, salt, pepper, and secret rotisserie seasoning. How many portions do you sell a day? On average, we're selling about 300 portions. Of that one? Of oh, that one waffle. Oh, yeah, just wow. that one. Then it's rolled in a mixture of flour, cornstarch, and deep-fried. I've had chicken and waffles that has a bone-in, but I've also had tender styles. I think we'll figure it out. I can find my way around a waffle. Or a bone. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Next, the warm, soft, freshly made waffle is piled with mac and cheese. Then the chicken drummy, a bit of seasoning, honey, and finally, scallions. Calvin, we've reached our final location. One of the most delicious things I've seen at the fair so far. I think we just go for it. I'm gonna just take a bite of chicken. Chicken, yes. and then chase it with a macaroni waffle oh. chaser. Mmm. Mm. 
Mmm. Oh, but wow. What a combination. It is so crunchy. And then it's just a nice, meaty, juicy, dark meat. I like how he used the bone-in drumstick. It gets you more involved in the action. And then that glaze, that honey. It's just, when you're at a place like this, where you're eating non-stop, highly decadent foods, you need that extra hit of sweetness to get your brain buzzing. Usually, I'm not a big fan of carbs on carbs. Right. But here, it's carb, protein, carb. So the chicken's almost surrounded by this carb heaven. This is our final food. The only thing left to do now is to decide which one was the most bizarre. Calvin, today we tried six different bizarre fair foods. Which, to you, was the most unique? The most unique out of all six today had to have been the Nordic waffle. Really? Yes. Even though the flavors are common, I think how they did it was truly unique. Calvin, I do agree. That is an awesome food. But for me, the most unique food, the most ballsy take on a menu item had to be the Memphis tachos. Ooh. Tater tots, peanut butter, bananas, bacon. It seems like it shouldn't work. For you, it didn't work. For me, it worked just fine. Well, Sonny, the Minnesota State Fair taught me one thing. What? You can put anything in a boat and it'll be delicious. And sell it for $20. <laughs> Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. Yeah, all right. Michelle. Yeah, of course. God, I'm so bad. Sorry, we're doing 100 interviews today. Michelle. Calvin, we have food number three right here from the restaurant known as Euro Time. Dino's. Dino's? Dino's. <laughs> <laughs> On top, a garlic butter sauce. Is that right? Roasty garlic butter. On top, this is all going to be voiceover, anyways. You nailed it. I mean, get another bucket! Okay. To me, this speaks glorious, glorious, gloriousness to me. To me, this speaks glory, glo to me, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that is it for this video. I want to say a huge thank you to my good friend Calvin right here next to me for joining me. You can join him on his YouTube channel right here. He has all kinds of fun food adventures. Follow along there, subscribe to see what Calvin is up to all over the USA. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A, a peace. peace. Okay.